Are you finally ready to talk about the dark thread that binds these men together? How in the hell did you pull Simone Biden? <laughs> yeah, man, it's really, really how she pulled me, man. Yes. Let's look at this translucent name Yorkie. We saw that man drag Kiki Palmer across the couch, pregnant. DDG as a BD will always have a lifeline and a puppet string to Holly because he can do things like this to make you act. Offset literally said it. You're my BM. I won. We investigating why men may love Panani, but also hate who have them. On today's Foreign Friday. It's a foreign man in a foreign land. As ambassador of the Negro Association, I declare this a state of emergency. From the makers of lockdown, I bring you lockdown. I deepen the hell up out of this vine boom sound today. If you said you know who it is, in the last fortnight, Chastity Cage. Feed out. Don't pass go, don't collect $200. Immediate Chastity Cage. You gotta lock that up. I had some questions that need answers. One of which is why do the man them secretly hate their partners? Especially when they're successful. I see no turn on stone bringing up Kiki Palmer. We definitely will be talking about that as well. In fact, I have multiple case studies because the research scientist in me needs multiple case studies. So we have a few subjects for this observational study. We have Yerky Yerky. We have DDG. We have Kiki Bomber's boyfriend because I don't know that name. And also Simone Biles' husband because I also don't know that nickname. This phenomena occurs across race and gender. There's nothing essential to these intersections that make these particular people more inclined to humiliating their partners. But I will say that with some caveats that we're going to get into because I do believe that there are some things in particular when it comes to black masculinity and the way how it operates in dealing with successful women, especially successful black women. We are in a waste man pandemic. I guess the best way to tell you is to show you. This is Yerky Yerky looking like Ian from Shameless. Looking like Ian from Shameless, but when that actor played the Joker on Gotham. Who and why is Yerky, you may ask. You know, stay tuned. But as you can see, Jerky Jerky is being brutalized, absolutely getting the raw smack down, otherwise known as being apprehended by the bacon, the pork, pig jerky, if you will. Well, at least we ain't got no knees or neck. Yeah probably wondering how we got here when just a month ago we were talking about Yerky's claim to fame. Bigging up a Disney star. On your tombstone, impregnated Disney star. Sky Jackson is a Disney star, alleged domestic abuser, and confirmed child doctor. I want to make a blanket and unequivocal statement. There will be no misogynoir inside the chat. So if you find yourselves typing in a particular fashion and that sentence ends up being something misogynoir adjacent, just delete that. Keep that in the drafts. In fact, actually, no, delete the drafts. I am for women's rights as well as women's wrongs. And, and this is definitely a wrong that she has done. First, let me give you a little primer on... Sky Jackson. Gelato, I just realized, is he calling himself Yerky? Like, because it rhymes with Perk? Perk and Yerk? I didn't even realize that. I only know about Perk because of Future. Future Van Dross. Y'all making me seem like Carlton and I don't know about anything urban. The only time I ever see a perk or a Vicodin was on goddamn house. What the dog doing? doing? Anyway, this is Sky Jackson because a lot of y'all was asking who Sky Jackson was. Whatever your name was. <laughs> hey Jesse, you want to be my new nanny? Talented actress. Talented, right? Bright future that has been dimmed by her extracurricular activities, such as the fact that she doxes minors. Yeah, that's the sound I needed for that. Uh-huh. She doxed minors for good? She was using Twitter to expose racist teenagers. Now she's facing heat for sharing details about a 13-year-old boy that fans claimed caused the kid's parents to lose their jobs. Some would consider exposing racism to be based. However, let's not try to dismantle the master's house with the master's tools. Just like how Nick Fuente is. You know how he did the whole your body, my choice thing and then he recently got doxxed? Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I can say twink now. I found it out. 
Chad, Chad gave me the twink pass. The way how he came on here, bad. I feel bad saying that because I feel like I'm mocking queer black men. Control your bodies. Guess what? Guys win again, okay? Men win again. And yes, we control your bodies. Hi, I'm your Republican congressman. <laughs> Hi. For a long time, I thought that this was a griff, but I really feel like he really liked this. It's your body, my choice. <laughs> and men, women again, men win again. There will never, ever be a female president. I never wanted to squirrely and so bad, I ain't gonna lie. He got doxxed shortly thereafter this. Yeah. Your home, my choice. It's the same thing with using misogyny to combat JK Rowland's transphobia. As much as it feels good, it's not what's gonna free us. I know I sound like I'm trying to free the slaves right now. I know I sound J. Cole coded right now. So Sky Jackson's extracurricular activities get more infamy than her actual acting. And that's most notably her allegations of domestic abuse towards her BD, Yerky Yerky. Sky Jackson has reportedly been arrested for domestic violence. According to TMZ, the Disney Channel star was spotted arguing with her boyfriend, and cops were called after security allegedly saw Sky push her partner more than once. Deputies claim they reviewed surveillance footage, which showed Jackson pushing her boyfriend, leading to her arrest. I ain't going too deep into that because I already did that with Crystal Alejandro of Black Feminine TV. Y'all should go watch that after this. But since then, Sky and Yerky Yerk have had a turbulent pregnancy, if I say so myself. Big Yerks out here. What the dog doing? <laughs> it's killing me, bro. <laughs> Say you telling me these people are rich? In the high waters and the wife beater, Sky out here absolutely in shambles, it would seem. I remember when my heart broke. I'm not going to be able to play this song, but I will play it right now. I, remember when I, gave up. I learned that it is not albino, but it is person with albinism. I don't care about respectability politics to the extent of like how you dress in determining how people have to interact with you and that I need to dress in a suit and thing like that in order to gain respect. They was gonna call my one big nose having long dragon an oxygen guzzling nostril negro anyway. Right? So that's first off. Let's get that out. Let's get that out of the way. I could be in a monkey suit and they will call me a monkey. It's unfortunate that Sky is robbed of her privacy as well as her normalcy to be outside in a bonnet simply because she an actress. Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs and all them was out there standing up in sweats. And then nobody is say that they broke. It's us that they is called broke when we come outside looking like this. That being said, it could be benevolently sexist of me to say this, right, y'all? I could drop all my business out in front street, all my dirty laundry. I resigned from any argument with my wife any argument unless it was absolutely crucial like if the ramifications were that we like life or death type thing i resigned from any argument unless it was absolutely crucial during my wife's pregnancy and the first four months postpartum now after that it was bombs over baghdad but during the duration as soon as i knew that she was pregnant and four months after she was pregnant no matter how much i wanted to get my debate bro on i shelved it no argument was worth her stress while carrying our child period or, or, or no period that's a dad joke when i see things like this right i'm thinking of how my wife was when she was pregnant and even right now and i was just like i couldn't imagine having a walk in the hot sun and i rowing her out but her bd yerky yerk doesn't see either of those things as a problem so let's look at this translucent Nick Nog named Yerky. Let's look deep into him. I, I could smell the car from here. This him hanging out with the man them. Hey, hey, on my brother, I know y'all on this being nosy as hey. out. On my bed, hey. these hoes. He say, F these 304s. Oh, these hoes. Hey, and we on tour. This is something getting slayed tonight. And he said that something is getting slipped. And he ain't even driving? Hold on, is he not even driving? Well, I mean, I'm glad he's not driving, but how are you in the passenger seat saying things like this? Come on, man. Oh, this hurt me. I, this on my chest, bro. This on my chest like a bad burp. This ain't no homophobia when I say that these love man. Niggas love man. Let, don't, don't let them fool you. They love vagina, but they hate woman. I've seen it firsthand. This ain't no homophobia. I've seen it firsthand. You could have a whole row a urinals open, but you could jam yourself next to the one that's in occupation because you love man. You is being the car, pack up with man. 
you was be on the porch with five, six, seven, eight man, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, man. You take your girl car, you, you get your girl, you ask your girl for the keys. You know, she gotta go to work in about an hour or so, but you take the keys to go see your boys, to go see man, liking man. To- they talking about you going to do drills and something getting slit with man. But that ain't the problem. A lot of folks out here been talking about him being DL. That ain't the problem. The problem with them and the brand of man likeness that they talking about is the fact that it is not a love for man. More so, is it a love for man the same way that white people love whiteness? This right here, which you're seeing, this like level of misogyny that you're seeing is a bonding agent. The violent machismo of saying something like something getting slit is a bonding exercise. Much like racism is a bonding practice for white folks, misogyny is a bonding practice for men. Don't mind the man them singing songs like Trey songs and Chris Brown them because they could serenade which they could serenade you with the same mouth. They could call you everything but a child of God. They hate women. And if you think I being hyperbolic, I ain't saying nothing that he ain't already said himself. Yerky Yerk say on WAP. Now first, who the hell is WAP? Who, what that even mean, man? You mean like Guap? Is he talking about the prehistoric, archaic slur for Italian people? Because if so, I'm sorry, Italians, the real black people. Yerky Yerk is saying, on Wop, I'm salty, I got this dumb, yeah. Disney Channel, yeah. Pregnant, I hate this. Yeah. What does this even mean? Dog, what is he doing? What the dog doing? Must see the new Chinese fentanyl. That got y'all in a chokehold like this. This this shouldn't be news, right? This ought not be news. Because if we heeded the red flags, then we would have seen what was coming next. Which is him massaging his wounded masculinity by sullying a dead man's name. Hold on. Because he already don't speak English. This speaks Simlish. And, and you could barely hear this. Let me audio engineer him and his non-existent rap career and boost his audio up a little bit so you could hear this foolishness. That nigga in his wood right here. He beefing with the dead Disney dude. How your only ops dead? Like not dead like you did something about it. No, you beefing literal dead. Where are they making y'all? Whoever making these new n****s, y'all need to stop the conveyor belt. I know I said stop the cap. Stop the cap. But you need to stop the conveyor belt at the factory and you need to close it down and you need to look at the ingredients because something wrong. Something wrong. That nigga in his wood right here. He say that nigga in the wood. And of course, like he flash like the backwood. I assume it's a backwood. I don't smoke. But he trying to say that he's smoking on Cameron Boyce. If you don't recall who Cameron Boyce is, I'm going to show you in a second. But yeah, he say he's smoking on a dead. Stop comparing me to a dead nigga, though. The fuck is Say, stop comparing me to a dead dude. Y'all cool? What the fuck? Is y'all cool? Y'all keep on comparing me to a that's dead. Put him in a bow. I'm about to shoot the child, nigga. I'm in love with both. He's sick of people comparing him to this dude, who, if you don't know, passed of a seizure. And I guess. People are saying that he bears some resemblance to this actor. And your response is to say that you smoking on him because he did? That's definitely a choice. When I say that I never seen karma work this quick, this is what happened after he did all of this foolishness. Did this man really get himself arrested yesterday after everything broke in the news? Dog ended up face down on the pavement. And right before that, even worse happened. I mean, the day just started. It looks like somebody's being detained by the police. This is Ohio. Yes, the guy even pans over in this video that you're going to see in a minute and shows an Ohio license plate. But apparently this happened Yesterday, he had got arrested, lifts his head up. That looks like the baby father. And the guy in the video who was watching all of this said, oh, he also got hit by a car. And toward the end of the video, you can see he looks like he's in physical distress. And the cop kind of rolls him over, kind of like to assess him to make sure, see if anything's broken. But why are you getting arrested? Dude, allegedly got hit 
by a car and then got arrested right after saying that he's smoking on Cameron. I don't like to revel in the misfortune of folks, especially at the hand of the penal system, but it's hard to empathize with this man. The question that a lot of folks ask after seeing all of this go down is why Sky? No, that's it. Like why Sky? Like why, why Yerky? You're an attractive, successful woman. Why deal with Yerky? A man who you met by way of pen piling him in jail, apparently, actually, who has added you to his list of baby mothers. I assume it's difficult dating in that environment in general. Like a lot of the celeb just ran through. Like when the celeb is heard, reduce, reuse and recycle, like they took that and they ran with it. Bruh. Right. Bruh. Bruh. So I can imagine that it might be hard finding partnership. And she's expressed that she doesn't want to date anybody famous. I don't want a boyfriend that's famous at all. I don't want... Y'all will see. When I get a boyfriend, y'all won't know about him for a minute. No, I'm just joking, y'all. But I really don't want a boyfriend that's famous. I don't want y'all to know what he looks like. I don't want you to follow him. I don't even want you to know. If this boy was missing, I wouldn't even post him. Just know that. Why is he wearing a shiesty, bro? I can't stand this man. Oh, God. I can't stand him, bro. Why is he wearing a shiesty, bro? Telia said he looks like ye. I can empathize with, with finding it hard to date while famous and trying to date non-famous folks. And not to equate fame with funds, right? Or, or fame with success. But there's a danger in this dynamic. The model of man is apex. We're supposed to be physically adept, emotionally unflappable, and financially magnanimous. But that man doesn't exist, right? We, we could all agree that like that idea, that concept of manhood, the idyllic man does not exist. And if he does, he's miserable. Cis het men occupy all kinds of different data points on these individual spectrums and they still are able to find partners. And that being said, we often incur the social sanctions from not embodying that unobtainable paragon. The model of women on the other hand is submissive, to the idyllic man, honorary and small. Each of these men are with women that are successful in their own respects and arguably more successful than their partners. Given the aforementioned description of manhood and femininity, if that man is less successful than his partner and subscribes to those definitions of manhood, there will be conflict. There will be resentment and that resentment leads to sabotage, or the pseudo-masculine urge to humble women. The election as an allegory, but let me cook real quick. Out of the past has come a philosophy he calls the Southern way of life. The Negro and his place is at the heart of it. This is the way it has been. It's the history of the South is because we've been brought up like this. We have been taught like this. And we teach our children like this. And they'll teach their children like that. I think it is a matter that has been history all down through the years and will remain history. Well, I guess it's just plain born in us, instilled in us, um, there, in spite of the fact that you have great respect for some Negro individuals, respect them as people and not just as a servant. Um, there is some physical revulsion, I think, that the, the, the skin is dark. And I guess it's just something that we are so um, familiar with. It, it's just impossible, really, to overcome it. Like Ralph Ellison said, the most fatal mistake you can make as a black man is to believe that you are a man, to beguile yourself and forget your place and believe that you are a man. In other words, you, black person, can forget your place, but America will remember and they will remind you. And that's exactly what they did in the last election. A repudiation of roles. That's what happened in the last election. It's silly of you to think that white folks with great-grandparents that owned your ancestors, that hung you from the trees like ornaments. It's silly of you to think that all of them one day would see you as an equal. You may forget, but they will remember. And that extends to this binary of man and woman. Regardless of the pendulum swing to progressivism here and there, at the end of the day, there are some men that will never see you, a woman, as anything more than the rib of man. And when a woman betrays that role by being successful, that man, in his smallness, will revolt. He will Brooks Brother riot. 
He will January 6th. He will unite the right Tiki Torch Man the March. He will humble you. One of my favorite books, Things That Fall Apart, Chin Watch, A.B. Um, I'm sure a lot of you all probably read that like in high school. Your children, if you have children, probably won't because the Department of Education is going very soon. It's going to be gutted. Um, but Chin Watch, A.B. said, uh, I remember like no matter how prosperous a man was, if he was unable to rule his women and children, and especially his women, especially his women now, if he wasn't able to rule his women and his children, he was not really a man. He was like the man in a song who had 10 and one wives and not enough soup for his fufu. All of that to say that what we see at this level, what we see in this dynamic with a man that might not be as successful as his counterpart, his feminine counterpart, a lot of us do not have the fortitude in our masculinity to reconcile with that and be okay with that. And especially as a black man after... Being told that you are not a man, you need to find some way to reclaim that. And speaking of childhood Disney stars, it would be wrong not to turn our gaze towards Darius Jackson of Kiki Palmer fame. Here we are. Kiki Palmer needs absolutely no introduction and I won't even insult her by giving her an introduction. You do need an introduction, however, to Darius Jackson. Because I don't even know who the hell this is. I ain't gonna lie. This picture right here. Does it look... Like it's forged in fire. Because believe it or not, it was. They look like they're enjoying themselves. Believe it or not, this is what abuse looks like. Joyish laughter, love bombing, affection. It doesn't always look like a Tyler Perry movie. It doesn't always look like Malcolm and Marie. Thank you, Tariq. God, I love having black people inside a chat. It can be bouts of happiness that serve as the cause between violence. It can look like this one second and then be extremely abusive the next. Supporting women can be so hard so hard we saw that man drag kiki palmer across the couch pregnant to beat her and teach her a lesson it was so bad the abuse she endured was so bad that she filed for sole custody of the child she was even granted <laughs> and now he's standing right beside her at her 31st birthday party we need more latitude for understanding love and how complex it is. Abusers are as charismatic as victims are violent. This black and white binary we look at good and evil through, it not only like dehumanizes us, dehumanizes everyone really, it dehumanizes the victims because victims aren't only survivors, they can be fully fledged and articulated individuals that are robbed of their wholeness by abuse. But these binoculars that we use to see the world through can also cause us to miss the signs. The same way we need to expand our lexicon of dog whistles when dealing with racism and transphobia. And, and you know, you all don't like to hear this. Like a lot of white folks don't like to hear this, but like a lot of white folks be needing to hear the word with a hard R or see the streets bleed in blood to begin to listen to black folks about systemic racism or police brutality. If you only attune to see grand displays of harm, then you will miss the boring pains that we come to know as mundanity. You will miss the boring pains that we come to know as a Monday at the office with your misogynist boss or a Tuesday with the transphobic client at the factory. We need to begin to develop resolution for our eyes to see the everyday violence that we live in on a regular basis. The things that we have grown accustomed to simply thinking to be is. And given that it is, it will always be. That robs us of our ability to imagine what could be. Not because it is means it's right. Now, you may not have noticed, right? Or you might have. What we're seeing in common with both Yerky and Darius is when their partners were at their most vulnerable times, Darius and Yerky displayed ostentatious levels of hatred. And I find that fascinating. Like you, you couldn't hold it together when the gal belly lapping over with your baby. You couldn't hold it together in this time when the world is watching all eyes on her. And that's when you decide to show your ugliest side. And that brings us unfortunately to another Disney star by way of Little Mermaid fame. Uh, which was also a very terrible movie, by the way, um, especially because Under the Sea. David Diggs, thank you, Jabari. This is Halle Bailey, 
and DDG. And they're enjoying each other. I want to start off with something charitable. Because, again, the way the dissolvement of relationships happen isn't always akin to an episode of Baddies on the Zeus Network. Halle Bailey, talented music artist, actress, at the apogee of her career, teams up with DDG, a successful YouTuber. And they have a child together. It is important to note that the levels of success aren't as canyon-esque as the former examples. DDG is a huge YouTuber. That being said, and as a YouTuber myself, I could attest to this, the inferiority complex that we have with legacy media, despite the fact that YouTubers be winning accolades, traditional and new, as well as being projected to be just as influential and financially solvent, um, if not more so than traditional media, because like a lot of traditional media, I mean, I don't know if you see in Hollywood, but like, mm, it's, a, it's a thing. We have a chip on our shoulder when it comes to traditional media. One wonders if DDG had that chip on his shoulder looking at Halle Bailey and her career in traditional media. DDG got like a lot of hate when he brought Halle Bailey to see goddamn Krishan and Blueface. Folks were saying that Halle's brand had been painted. People were trying to say that DDG was purposely trying to bring Holly down to his level. A lot of these men are getting access to these beautiful women because they're dating higher echelon women. And this is what the Manosphere teaches. Tactics that operate in the Manosphere at droves. That's the reason why we talk about like there are not enough people addressing the things that need to be addressed for young men. Certain things you won't get on the left as far as just like conversations because we, to an extent, believe we're not necessarily above it, but engaging it in it. It's almost like talking to someone that's problematic on stream and then you get like accused for platforming them or, or like, you know, discussing some of the talking points that Andrew Tate or someone is talking about uh, is beneath us. I do think that we need to begin to meet people where they're at and have discussions on things that are not commonly talked about at the left because like I was talking about Gen Z earlier, they have grown up on this slop from the manosphere and adjacent communities and they get to a point where they could vote and now you're surprised that they vote in the way that they vote in. If you open up a fresh YouTube, we don't show up there simply because the things that we're talking about aren't adjacent to the things that the right are talking about. And if we don't talk about it, or if we don't at least address some of those points in some way that there's an option, there will be no other option for them. Do you know how hard it is to break out of an echo chamber? YouTube pushes what the audience reacts to. Your average person is involved in that discourse. That is the type of conversations that they're having. It's not this academic, rigorous, and rigid dissection of socio phenomena and political phenomena. Tariq, the reason why we don't see no manosphere shit is because our feeds are extremely cultivated for our own liking to keep us there as long as possible. So if they know that we on this, then we only gonna deal on that. So what I try to do is to meet people where they are. If you watching or you trying to look for gym content, I gotta be there. If you engage in, in celebrity gossip to an extent, I gotta find some way to at least address some of the things that you're talking about. Like, cause like for the, like for the people that into that, I gotta be able to at least try my best to position myself so I on the sidebar somewhere so you have a, at least a choice, at least a chance not to watch Cynthia G or not to watch Andrew Tate and not to fall deeper down that rabbit hole because at some point there's gonna be a crack inside that chamber of light and it's gonna allow you to maybe get out. I can't make you click, but I can at least try. There are many different uh, ways in which partners build their partners. And the unfortunate way that she's engaging with it is that sometimes that's okay. You know, relationships don't work out. It works out in ways that it doesn't look like all the time. You leaving a relationship isn't necessarily the end of the relationship. It's an evolution, maybe a natural progression of the relationship. And we should treat it like that. The things that you've learned and the memories that you shared with that person, it's not a bad thing. You spend that time, they were crucial to your life at that point. You learn things, you shared moments, and then you, you grow. Every day you consent to being with your partner. That's the way, like, like I ain't gonna lie, like us, like the monogamous, like folks, like us, like we, we be struggling sometimes because like every day you have to consent to being with your partner. Your partner is constantly growing. Like the person that you're with is constantly growing. And like you have to consent to those changes. The idea that we need 
to tether ourselves to someone until death do us part without like a cognizance of the person changing and like you saying, okay, am I okay with these changes? Or are we changing away from each other or to, to, together? It's a contractual negotiation that you're making on a regular basis. And that's great. And that's romantic too. Can you imagine like basically like you're, you're marrying your partner every day? All of this culminated oh, in I'm going to give you a backstory. Up. So I've announced that me and Hallie has split, right? It's life. It happens, right? She's still family. I love her to death no matter what. Everything's still good. Never know what the future holds. Anything else past that statement is nobody else's business. I see people keep Definitely. creating, they keep creating uh, stories, timelines. No one was wrong in the situation. Nobody came on and said he did this, she did that. No. Me and Hallie, our family, we good. They've broken up and co pairing is difficult. She's still postpartum. DDG could then do this. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. He looked just like Daryl, bro. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is Kai Sinat Stream. Halle Bailey tweets Hi, everyone. Just so you know, I am out of town and I don't approve of my baby being on a stream tonight. I wasn't told or notified, and I'm extremely upset to have my baby in front of millions of people. I am his mother and protector and saddened that I wasn't notified, especially when I am out of town. Giving someone the charitable out, even if they don't deserve it. The type of guy that DDG strikes me to be isn't a person that is super cognizant of the problem that is bringing a child at the stream, given that they live extremely visible lives anyway, and that he's already shown him all over the place and all that other stuff. I can see how he wouldn't be considerate enough to think about how Holly would be in that situation, not knowing that your child is on stream and then opening up your phone and watching your child on stream because he has content brain. I get this sometimes, right? If I'm doing something, I'm all like, ooh, this could be a big body foreign video. And I'm just like, no, like enjoy your food. Not just that the mother is often the one that's criticized publicly for the child's upbringing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a really good point. The same standard DDG has for being a dad. Like I remember like when dads were holding their child like in, in you know, unconventional ways and they were getting applauded for that. But have you ever listened to, especially women, police how other women deal with their children? Let me tell you something. Have you ever listened to how women talk to other women that just had children about breastfeeding? Oh my God. The same way that I parent my child, I can get all the extillations for that. But let my wife not like hold the baby head the right way to breastfeed. If they see my child drinking the bottle and I give them the bottle, that's fine. If they see my wife giving the child the bottle, they could be all like, that's breast milk, right? Cause that don't look like breast milk. You giving your baby Similac? What? Don't you know that like children that drink breast milk are smarter? The same preoccupations as a parent are so different depending on the parent. <laughs> so like I'm saying, DDG probably don't think about half the things, security wise, health wise, all these other things that Holly is probably thinking of. That's not to say that he's off the hook for it. Now the uncharitable take would be that, oh no, he knew Holly wouldn't want to see her child on Kai's not stream with a bunch of impressionable, thousands and thousands and thousands of impressionable and sometimes transphobic and sometimes racist and sometimes misogynist and all those other things, um, watching watching her child. I'd be bereft. I can imagine she, she, you know, and she's postpartum, not to like even involve the hormones involved with that at all, because I mean, regardless, even if she wasn't postpartum, seeing your child in an environment that you don't expect them to be, that is nerve wracking to imagine having your child in an environment where you see on a regular basis like this is turn is set into i Kali. Kali, good my like if i had even in my safe stream if i had peanut on stream right now and was having his face and all that other stuff my wife would, whoa, she would race break all kind of traffic laws and drive on the sidewalk to get to me Holly is being tame in this response because a lot of other people would come barreling down the road to get to their child if they knew that that child was in an environment like that an environment where you don't know if you could be swatted an environment where you didn't know that they were going to be there you didn't have any conversation about like the parameters as a dad and not only that but a DDG having spent time with 
Holly for quite some amount of time, right? You should know that. You all were together for quite some time. You should know the, the triggers. You should know the things that that person probably wouldn't like or would like. People were way too judgmental towards her about this because like this shit was an appropriate period. Absolutely. And the fact of the matter is like she was engaging with a lot of gaslighting and people would say she tripping. She was seen as the unreasonable parent, as the not cool parent. And quite often the mothers are seen as the uncool parent because we get to be cool because we're not always and we're not seen as the primary caregiver. To be involved with the daily operations of raising a child, to maybe have to dole out some of the discipline and do things that the child doesn't like. And then the dad comes home, he's overjoyed to see the child. The child is going to become conditioned to identify dad as this person is always happy to see him, never having to tell him to go to bed, never having to put on his diapers and things like that when the child doesn't want to have the diaper on. But the mother is always going to be seen as the disciplinarian because she's always there. So even a different thing in parents says, and so that's extended now to the public court of opinion. Everybody's gaslighting her. Black women are already seen as aggressive. Cardi B is literally going through seeing deep fake images of her child in an appropriate exa Exactly. All of these things probably going through a mother's mind when they see their child on a stream that they wouldn't have imagined seeing them on. So when this happened, Halo himself live in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now Halo, you don't know this, but I'm your uncle. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm your uncle. You know, um, you know when you were born. In good, that's good. If I were a baby and Kai's now with my uncle, I was sudden. <laughs> I would have sudden infant death syndrome myself. <laughs> I understand that Haley then came back to apologize, apologize for her saying what she said in regards to this. It is absolute gaslighting and humiliation. You're getting her to react in a way that regardless if y'all are together or not, romantically involved or not, DDG as a BV will always have a lifeline and a puppet string to Holly because he can do things like this to make you act to get you to react. Offset literally said it. You're my BM, I won. There's so many different examples that you have this. This like urge, this like pseudo masculine urge to humiliate their partners. If they feel like that partner is more successful to them, that they had the nerve to excel at whatever they're in. It extends not only to art and movies and music, it also extends to How sports. in the hell did you pull Simone Bayou? <laughs> yeah, man, man, it's really, really hard. Piece of resistance, Mr. Biles himself, because I don't know this dude's name. I don't know this dude's name. But we know Simone Biles to be the athlete of our generation. Simone Biles is an amazing athlete, a beautiful black woman, and should be cherished. This is Simone Biles' beau, and he's about to say that he didn't know her at all how in the hell did you pull simone by you? <laughs> man, man it's really really how she pulled me man yeah, so she really booked you i could understand like you might you know feel yourself a little bit you know you just get your hair replot you just got your new twists the ring light hitting your eyes so you know cat looking eyes uh got a little bit of like a glint to it is given i stayed in the house while you was in the fields you found that rosy pink vaseline lip balm that you actually found from simone herself and you took it out of a bag and then you put it on your lip you know that the dsl is dsl and and you go fix your mouth to say that man man you mean how she pulled me if i had hair she would have yanked my frontal out you better be happy that that girl have poise and control she pops up and i'm like Mm, let me see who this is. Gymnastics. I ain't never, you know, I, I never really paid attention to gymnastics. So I didn't know who she was at the time. But like the first thing that I saw was that she just had a bunch of followers. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, she got to be good. If yeah. I promise so you, when I'm, she I'm, won the Olympics, I was in college and we didn't have NBC. We didn't have Olympic channels. And we're in camp. We're in camp late, late, late July, early August. So I'm not paying attention to. You know, so I never would have had a moment to where I would have watched. Like, we couldn't do much as COVID happened. Everything was shut down. So um, she came through down um, down to Houston. Stop the cap. You could tell these 
is visibly a telling him that is cap. She live in the suburbs, so she had to drive about 45 minutes to me. Simone shouldn't be driving nowhere, let alone 45 minutes to with Brits. Um, then the rest is history, man. So, so you was really the catch in. I always say we the men are catch. I want this frame to be the last thing that you see. What's the theme of the stream? Reasons to pick up, reasons to check out for me. <laughs> he didn't know how to reconcile with her being the moment and him having to play a supportive role. Seeing what we just saw and reconciling with how some of us make sense of their success in relation to our own. That's kind of terrifying. It's kind of terrifying that the way that we reconcile with it is to humble them. The way that we reconcile with it is to hurt them, is to humiliate them. And it goes farther than that. I understand the 4B movement. I don't necessarily know if that's the solution. I don't know if ostracizing ourselves is the way forward. But I understand why one would move that way. I can't begrudge women who want to opt out of men, especially when you have glowing examples of men trying to hurt you, men voting against your enfranchisement, men reveling in the fact that they have access to your body in ways that you don't. White girl feminism will not save you. As we've seen with this election, if the 4B movement is gonna be led or co-opted by white women, <laughs> I get black women wanting to opt out of even like that. I do understand how 4B can definitely find its way into turf rhetoric. It is a Korean movement. White feminism will not save you. Taylor Swift pump spice latte won't save you. Like, no. It will always be an agency of patriarchy and white supremacy. Always. They just want a seat at the table. They, they just want a seat at the table.